Welcome to another episode of the Changemaker Table. I'm your host, Lois Castillo, and today we have a truly inspiring guest with us, Erin Kamen, the founder of Brilliant Escapes Travel and a senior director in the world of advertising. Erin, welcome to the show. Thank you for sitting down at the table with us. Thank you for bringing me to the table, Lois. I do have to share this little nugget. Erin and I were childhood friends. We went to junior high and elementary school together. A few years ago, a mutual friend and I reconnected and connected me back to Aaron. And what is so beautiful is that all three of us from Homewood, Illinois, got to give a shout out, are all in advertising. And for me, that is just such an interesting revelation of young folks, of how you reconnect with folks who are creating a difference, who come from the same community that just has this impactful drive to create change in the world. And I'm so happy when we reconnected. I just knew I had to have you on the show to share your story and your journey and to find out that we're in the same industry and have been for so long. And this industry to bring us back together is just so important. We have a lot to talk about today. So I want to jump right yeah. in it. And Erin, please start off by introducing yourself and share a little bit about this wonderful journey and your background. Absolutely. So you already did a great job of introducing me. So Aaron Kamen. I I currently live in Atlanta, Georgia, and I work as a senior director uh, for an ad tech company, as well as uh, I'm the founder of uh, Brilliant Escapes Travel. Uh, so I'm doing those both, which sometimes can be challenging to juggle. My background has primarily been in advertising. So you know, as you mentioned, Lois, we've, we've both been in the industry for a while. And I started out in Chicago, spent a few years working there before I made the move to New York, spent 10 years in New York in advertising. And then COVID happened and it was time for me to get out of New York. So the time to leave was coming. And then when COVID happened, it really pushed me out. And I made the decision to, to move to Atlanta, even though I knew a handful of people here and had really no idea what I was going to get myself into. I didn't even see the house I was renting until the day I moved in. So moving in the middle of a global pandemic is a bit challenging, um, but it's probably one of the best decisions I've ever made. Um, I love it here and, and really do feel at home in Atlanta. So I'm, I'm you know, very glad that I, that I made the move and I think speaks to the you know idea of change and taking those risks and take, making those changes that, that can really have a positive outcome on the other end. That's amazing. I think that just to hear that, you know, when you're creating change, it kind of starts with yourself with taking risks and believing in yourself and just stepping out on faith. So, mm -hmm. you know, your journey is incredibly diverse. Erin, can you tell us what inspired you to embark on this path? So I had, as I mentioned, I'd been in agency world for a really long time. And after a while, it, I just realized it was no longer serving me. I was in my last agency job. This was about five years ago. And I was absolutely miserable, super burned out, and no longer enjoyed what I was doing at work. I felt very drained each and every day. I had no motivation to go out with friends on the weekend. I just wanted to be by myself and have quiet and rest time before I had to get back into it for another week. And it just, it wasn't sustainable. I didn't feel like myself and I knew something had to change. So I decided to quit my job and oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> really make that change. And not just to quit, but to, you know, take a break from work. So I decided to take a break and travel. And I think at first when I started making that plan, it was I'll travel for about a month which really wasn't enough time for the reset that I, I really needed. And so I changed it to six months, seven months, and decided to travel to Europe for a few months and then to Southeast Asia. And what happened in, in Asia is I got stuck there sure. <laughs> by choice and decided to stay in Thailand as I was learning how to scuba dive in Koh Tao, Thailand. Oh, wow. And yeah, the opportunity to stay and become a, a dive master. and just scuba dive every day for four months. And so I did that. I skipped my flight home that I had planned and stayed in Asia for another four months, which was very unlike me <laughs> to not really have a plan and to spontaneously decide something like that. 
but, you know, kind of figured things out on the back end of my apartment in New York and, and made it all work out. And really taking that time off made such a difference, right? I was able to kind of reset where I was, what I wanted to be doing, how I wanted my work-life balance to look in the future. And, you know, when I came back, I, I spent a couple of months trying to find the right type of role and right type of job still within advertising, but not with that, you know, agency grind that I had been used to in the previous time. And so I, you know, I looked for a job, but also I started a travel business and I started that business about two weeks after I came home from traveling. And that was really because I was inspired to, ha to help other people have incredible life-changing travel experiences. Not maybe for 10 months, <laughs> I understand, <laughs> but, yeah. you know, be able to have those experiences that kind of take them away from the day-to-day, -day, the busyness of life. Maybe they're feeling burned out. They really need a, a vacation. They just need some time away and being able to help someone pull, put that together. You know, I know what it feels like to be that burnout and to not take that time for yourself. Um, and so really want to offer that gift of trouble to help people reset, refresh themselves, reconnect with others through travel. I think that's so liberating. I think to be so self-aware of saying, you know what, this role that I'm in, this isn't me. You know, you talk about knowing the signs that who you were becoming in the role at the, you know, I know you personally, so I know you're probably at the height of your career and people on the outside were like, you're living the dream, as we like to say in our industry, but to say there's something more for me to step away and leap out on faith and to take that step and to travel and kind of walk out on faith and explore, but then to come back and say, I want to help others have that dream or have that escape so they can relax and unwind so they can live their full life is remarkable. I am just a little bit at loss for words because I think we talk about rest. We're always on the mm -hmm. grind. I think everyone talks about work-life balance and it's always work first and you spend so much time of it, but we never take the signs of what true burnout is and how to relax. Like I try to tell, you know, sleep isn't fully rest. It's like, okay, I'm going to take a month off. But you took the time that you needed to come back and be fresh and rejuvenated. And now you've created this amazing travel business, Brilliant Escapes Travel, to help other professionals navigate. So how do you envision your efforts making a positive impact, not only just on society? I mean, what's the truly inspiration behind it? Yeah, you know, again, I, I really seek to help busy professionals finding that time to relax, restore, rest, and become inspired again. And I, I truly believe that travel can change us, that it opens up new perspectives. It brings you new ideas. You reconnect with your loved ones, with your fellow travelers, with meet strangers and, and connect with them around the world and really can bring joy into your life just to be somewhere else. And again, it doesn't have to be that you're trekking in Nepal, but it could just be taking a, a short week away to get out of town an hour away just to have that time to kind of just rethink, refresh. And I think when we all kind of have that individually, we bring that elsewhere into our life, right? So we come back to work with a new perspective. We come back to our other relationships with a new perspective. And it can really impact society on a broader level as everyone takes that time from away from the hustle, away from the grind and really prioritizing rest, as you said, to allow ourselves to be the best selves we can be and bring our best self to all of our interactions, to all of our relationships. Um, and so I think that is certainly a part of it. The other piece of that is travel comes with its downside has an impact, can have a positive and negative impact on the world we live in. And I think also looking for part, travel partners that I can work with, that I can bring to my clients that really focus on a more sustainable way of traveling, that give back to local communities. So there's another piece of not only just for yourself, you're taking not to leave, but there's also ways that you can be really mindful and conscious while you're traveling. And that's something that I can help my clients do as well. Oh, that's amazing. I love that. We talk about sustainability. And so the fact that you partner with organizations and travel 
it's being intentional, as you said, mm-hmm. and and being thoughtful, and it's it's a win win for the local community that you're in the areas that we you travel, giving back to that community, creating new perspective, but also being conscious of the world we live in and being good citizens of the world we live in. Absolutely. So it's evident this journey, this fifteen. <laughs> is it 10? I'm trying to get, I'm like, yeah, so, so it, <laughs> it was 10, 10 months traveling. So okay. 10 months sort of on the road and then about 15 months total that it wasn't working. So kind yes. of on the front end and the back end and looking for a job for a couple of months when I came back. Yes. I, I'm, I'm jealous. I, I wish I could. <laughs> I'm like, I'm counting to the day the youngest goes to college. I can be yes. like, we're dropping you off and we're getting on a 10 month cruise. I mean, the first out. part of it, the first like, you know, nine months or so was great. And the, the last few months were tough yeah. because I came back to New York and I'm like, I got to pay my bills yeah. and I don't have a job and I spent all this money traveling around the world. So, you know, that was that was the more challenging part. But it was also a lot of time I got to, you know, really spend time working in my business, which was great. Yeah. And, you know, I was trying not to leave my apartment so I wouldn't just spend money. So it was like, well, I'll stay home and just focus on, on working on this and, and also work on finding the right job opportunity that would really afford me the balance that I was looking for, give me time to work on my business, but also help me pay my bills and use the skills that I've had from working in advertising for so long to, you know, kind of, kind of not exactly a brand note in some of the other episodes you're talking about, like bridge roles and things like that. This was really sort of like, I need to keep the lights on, <laughs> get money again and pay some bills. But it's also really afforded me a great balance. They allowed me to work fully remote when I moved to Atlanta. And it's been a great environment to work in while I also try to stand up and build out my travel business. That's amazing. And I think as a, you know, being in the advertising industry, I think you you love this work. I think there's a piece of it that you love advertising. I, I think I'm assuming most people it's stressful. It can burn out. But when okay. you find the right role and the right organization, the right culture for you, you can do both very successfully. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I'm just so happy that you found that balance for you. I, I think about, you know, I just so the audience and, and the listeners can get a time frame. You traveled pre-COVID, right? You weren't traveling. Yes. Okay. And yes. then you came, you came back because you moved to Atlanta Right. Yeah. Be- you came back right before COVID, correct? So I moved at- during COVID. So I traveled okay. 2018 to 2019. I came home okay. the summer of 2019. And so I okay. actually started my, my current role fall of 2019. So I only worked in the office for a couple of months before everyone started working from home. Um, and then I moved August 2020. So okay. and we're still right in the middle of, of things being a little crazy. <laughs> I can imagine. So the last, you know, three years has just been so much change and you've had so much impact. It's evident that journey, that pause that you took, but just your journey has been a deep sense of purpose, Erin. What or who has been the driving force behind all of your inspiration? You know, I feel weird saying that I've been really inspired by myself. (laughs) That's enough. That is, hey, I, we don't give ourselves enough credit. So I'm glad that you are claiming your credit it's true you know i think being able to step back and and take that risk and someone who's a very cautious risk taker can easily say hey things feel comfortable why am i going to take this big risk and quit my job and go travel and what's going to happen there are a lot of scary what ifs but i really had to have that faith in myself and just saying no like this is enough and and i can't do this anymore and i need to take time for myself i think i was was really lucky that i had the resources to be able to do that. But that was something that I had done. I'd worked really hard. I'd saved money and then made it so I could give myself the gift of time and invest in taking the time away. And so really, I did feel really inspired by just taking that risk and seeing what I could do and I could figure it out and even deciding to stay an extra few months and figure out, well, how am I going to do this? And I got to find people to settle at my apartment and figured it out. And that was just a reminder for me of I can do this and I can figure out hard things and I can do scary things. And I also like to be able to inspire others in that way. So really 
doing what I doing what I say, not just yeah. talking, but actually walking the walk and doing the thing and leading by example and hopefully encouraging other people to take a risk to make the life change that they need to make. It's going to make them happier. And I think you know, that's been something that's really pushed me. And I think the other piece is really that feeling of being burned out, as we talked about. I don't ever want to feel that way. And yeah. it was terrible. <laughs> and I am I'm definitely motivated by how that felt and making sure I find the space in my current life, in my current roles and responsibilities in personal and professional life to have balance and to find time for myself to remind myself that I don't have to work like I need to put in the work but I don't have to work crazy hours and giving myself permission to to take a step to take a break sometimes it's hard but I know what it's like to just not be in that good place and I found it as I mentioned I found a job that it really is about this all about the people that I, I work with and I work for that are like get the work done but do it as you need to get it and yeah. it doesn't need to be like micromanaging in this crazy burnout hustle culture and it is far more you know there's more space to get things done and to kind of manage yourself and really have autonomy over what you're doing and I feel that by also starting my own business scary but also having that autonomy to say okay this is how I want to create this and this is what I want this to look like and what kind of flexibility do I want in my life what kind of financial goals do I have and really being to own, able to own a lot of that, that really feels motivating after being in a really negative space for a while. Well, I can see why you are your own inspiration. <laughs> it's just the self-awareness that I think sometimes we don't listen. And what I'm hearing is you listen to yourself. You listen to your intuition and you listen to your body mm -hmm. and you're holding yourself accountable to take care of yourself. So, you know, your journey is filled with so many valuable lessons and insight. What advice would you like to share with those who are inspired to make meaningful differences in their perspective fields or lives? Um, you know, one, one thing um, is just to take the risk. You know, even if you are <laughs> risk averse, a little cautious risk taker, I think we're so, we're so to make it a change or take that next step, even if we know what we're currently doing is not serving us. So, but we're stopping ourselves from what could be and what is possible. And so I think taking the risk and thinking about the what if, the, all the good things that could happen, not just the what if, all the bad stuff, but really what amazing things could happen if you take that chance or you make that change um, or you do the thing you've been dreaming of doing. I think just just getting started, you know, I, I tend to get in my own way a lot. And so <laughs> reminding yourself, get out of your own way. It's just start and be good enough. I, I am a perfectionist and I always think I need to have everything exactly right to be able to do the thing. And sometimes it's okay to just be good enough and just to do it, take the leap. And if you feel really passionate about what you're doing, you really know, trusting your intuition, trusting your gut, and saying, this is the thing I know I need to do, no matter how scary or wonderful it is. I'm just doing it and, and just taking the chance. I love that. Just start. Yeah. Just do it. As you reflect on your journey, are there any key lessons you wish you would have known when you first started? Yeah, I think there are times where I re realize I should have left uh, the agency life earlier. <laughs> I, I kind of let myself try to figure out like, no, just try another role and see if that makes things different. And it didn't. And then it actually made things worse. And I think, as I said, being scared to move out of the status quo, I was just sticking with it because it's what I knew rather than trying something different or taking a chance to do a different thing and still working in advertising now, but in a different way, in a way that's definitely far better suited for me and what I'm looking for in my life. As I said to you, I think it's easy to say, you know, get out of your own way, but I, I still do it. <laughs> but being in an entrepreneurial role with my travel business, reminding myself that it's more important to just get started and, and have it be good enough and iterate from there rather than trying to have everything be perfect from day one. I tend to agonize over the details and making sure everything is exactly right. And having people remind me like, no, it's good enough and just get it done. And I was super 
nervous about, oh, the website's not perfect. And then I launched my business and everyone's like, your website's great. And oh, it is. It's amazing. My- I just <laughs> was complimenting you on the blog. I It inspires me. My husband is like, we don't put your pocketbook down. Like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's so true. It's, it's so easy for us to be like so worried about because we're looking at it from our like, so this has to be exactly right. And it's like most people are going to see it and they're like, this is awesome. And what were you stressing out about? And, you know, just be, being doing the work, I think like making, I love writing my blog and I love uh, sending out my email newsletter. It's one of my favorite things about my job and because it's all about the inspiration and, and providing like tips and information, education. I love doing that. And so, you know, I was really nervous about starting that. And it's just like, just do it, just send it, just to, <laughs> and it doesn't always have to be the best ever blog post, but if I keep at it, as long as I'm inspiring people and making them excited to travel, go new places, learn something new, then I feel like I'm doing the work <laughs> that I need to be doing. And I think the last thing I would say, I'm not really good at asking for help. So <laughs> sometimes I have to remind myself to do that. And I think, you know, surrounding yourself with people who can be your cheering squad or your you know board of directors that you can bounce things off of or that can tell you get out of your own way like do the thing um is really important so I feel like I have that with my friends my fiance people in my life who can push me when I can overanalyze and overthink every single detail and so having somebody there that just can nudge you over the edge to finally be like okay you can do it. I think having that is really important because a lot of times I, I can try to figure stuff out by myself <laughs> and do it all by myself. And that can get really difficult. And sometimes it's really hard to make the change that you want to make when you're in your own head about it. And so being able to have those people that you can use as a resource, as a sounding board, that's really important. Oh, Thank you. I'm going to ask, as we come to a close, you've just shared so many gems and nuggets and your story is just incredible. What's next? Like, how can the listeners get in touch? How can they get be on the email list for, because the blog is amazing. It is inspiring. You're going to want to travel every week. Everybody's <laughs> going to be trying to quit their job. That's the goal. Yeah. So I'm on social media as Brilliant Escapes. Primarily Instagram, if you want to follow along. And then if you want to send up the newsletter, you can go to my website, which is brilliantescapes.com. And there's a, a sign up form on the website. And if you want to share anything out in the show notes, I can provide that as well. But I think follow along, hopefully get inspired. And if you're someone who's out there thinking like, I don't have time to plan a trip, but this sounds amazing and I need to take the break and I need to take some time away or I've been dreaming of this amazing trip and I just can't get it together. Like I would love to help you put that together and whether it's in the next couple of months or next year, but I really love working with people and can see their travel dreams come true. It sounds kind of cheesy, but it's true. Um, I'm seeing someone who's so excited about a trip and, and needs that time and really getting to see how that trip changes them and just hearing their stories when they come home is probably my favorite thing about planning travel. I will definitely be sharing all of Aaron's contact in the description and the show notes and all of our social contacts. So be on the lookout when we drop the episode. Again, I want to say thank you, Aaron, for sharing your incredible journey and the insights with us today. Your story is a testament to the power of resilience and transformation. To our listeners, thank you for joining us at the Changemaker Table. Remember, change starts with individuals like Aaron who dare to make a difference. Until next time, keep inspiring change. Thank you. Thank you.